Hello everybody, welcome to episode 11 of my tutorial series for Songs of Six. I'm Icon and today we're going to dive into the topic of mining. So today's goal is to set up ourselves a nice stone mine, or I should rather call it quarry, but yeah, we're going to build up ourselves a quarry. So as you see here, we have really rich deposits of stone for the city. I think stone is the most... Uh, rich deposit we got here as a matter of fact so the first things first we'll have to set up ourselves a mining ops so we have several options now we could go for the smaller deposit and build up our first mine here we could go for two mines one here and one there or just one huge mine here and a smaller one there. It's really pretty much up to you, but knowing what I do know, we're going to start out here with the smaller patch. There's one thing that I need to stress out first and foremostly when we're talking about mining in this game. It's a very, very labor-intense business. You're, you're going to invest a lot of laborers into that and therefore you really need to have some decent workforce before you get started, otherwise you will be very disappointed with the outcome. Therefore, I wanted to set up all these uh, extra goodies which we have set up in the last couple of episodes before we get started. So let's get ourselves two more, ten more immigrants to get ourselves some more odd jobbers. I also keep a eye on my food stockpiles because we happen to deplete these now a little more than before. So time to set up roads here as well. And we can already see that there's a bit of mountain in the way. I just like that. Go. And we're going to set up ourselves some roads alongside here. So our people have a easier... Um, so I have a easier segmenting between these two deposits. Because later we're going to shut off that layer and therefore we're not going to see it anymore so the thing here is right away off the bat this is already pretty labor intense to just get started here as you can see here we now need to chip apart the mountain this does take some time even if you have all the necessary workforce at your hand the old workers are pretty busy though, as you can see, 20 odd jobbers get a lot of work done. Even though we have these workers, it still takes some time. As you can see here, we're also clearing out some stone to ready for the pickup. But outside there, we're right now at 250 times speed, so we're really on, on turbo mode here. So let's not forget about the outside world for a second and let's uh, start chopping some trees because that's what you like to do and let's put up some light in there. I think it was uh, here. So we're going to put up some torches. I don't remember anymore if our people really enjoy that. We'll go to check that out in a second so whenever you are asking you are asking yourself if such things matter or not just check it out here in the environment tab so yeah humans do like lighting so we definitely do our dudes some favor to put these up in here in general they are also liked by your people when you put them down outside in the city lighting is another thing which just makes happens to make your people happy because it's there Another migrational pull effect. Okay, well, let's uh, fast forward further. Now with a little bit of lighting here for our dudes. And uh, let's check out how our janitors uh, see this area. So, yep. We're lucky with that. But as you can see here, this area here is already outside the axis of my janitor. That sucks. Ooh, uh, dang. 
So, this is so bad, because this means if I expand my quarry all the way back there, it'll be not repaired, and this, this portion here will fall into disrepair, which is bad. It, it looks bad, it is bad, and uh, therefore, we don't need to excavate this area here right now. So, let's delete those jobs here. I bet those dudes are happy that this uh, piece of work has been pulled, uh, has been blown off, and now we can also just set up the quarry. Alrighty. No, it's called a stone mine. Alright, we're we're actually building a mine. So let's see. Let's whip that over these thingies here. So we see here, we have now. 336 deposits, we have the highest output at 100%, that means we have deposits which have a 100% density, and the lowest de um, deposit we have in this patch here has 23%. Sounds a little bit uh, confusing, but it's not that confusing at all. Here goes the real number, 168 workers can find work in here, and that's not a blown up figure. You can really get these workers in there. And we're going to expand the size of the mine all the way over to here. As you can see here, the worker amount doesn't uh, climb higher only because you make the, the mine bigger. The worker amount is directly influenced by the amount of deposits. I think every worker can cover two deposits if I... Uh, I would assume that these numbers would be together. It is exactly like I like that. So, you don't. Luckily, you don't need to put up 168 workers into that right from the get go. That's another reason why I love to go big with mines. So, speaking about going big, we're also going to slap down a huge storage stockpile there so our dudes don't need to be hauling back stuff too often. Now things get a little bit annoying. Now you need to place down these auxiliaries. With large mines you need a lot of auxiliaries but by all means the efficiency rating has to be at 100%. You want to have as much efficiency in this thing as possible. Okay we got this. Now construct. As you've seen we've, we're needing wood and metal for this endeavor so you're not going to set up any mining ops before you have set up yourselves some smelting that's just as it is because your mine needs repairs from the janitors like i mentioned before and therefore if you do, if you don't have metal you're not going to have repairs happening there and that's a bad thing speaking about bad things there's going to be one strip of disrepair here. Yeah, well, okay. I'll live with that. One day we'll set up another janitor in this, uh, into this direction here too. Because in the long run, this is where I will put up my military. Because our city is really hard to attack from outside forces. The river protects us really well. And we can set up some wall over here at this side of the river. And here's going to be our military. Therefore... There's going to be a janitor in this region, and I have high hopes that with the installation of a, of a second janitor, these problems will just be gone. And besides, if there's just a minuscule amount of this mine not being repaired, that's not going to kill off the entire operation. It just looks a little bit ruddy at, at spots. Well, let's fast forward that. And now... Off to the most fun part, when the mine's opening its uh, gates, at minus 70 workers, so, no. First thing you do, you put that employee bar all the way down. Your mine is going to be practically your workforce sink. Whenever you have odd jobbers that you don't need to um, work anywhere right now, your minds are your best friends to put these people to some work. Because, as you see here, this will take a while until we have this thing running under full capacity. 
And even if we have this thing running under full capacity, you know? Just just not saying anything more, more than that. So, you see, mining is where you can get rid of a couple of uh, citizens in the positive way. This still doesn't mean that you're that you're producing insane amounts of stone now. The real harsh part about mining is it doesn't provide that much output right from the beginning. It's really important that you have a high density in these deposits. A low density in the deposits is basically enough to make it not worth building a mine at all at the beginning of the game. If your technologies are sufficient, I think it might be actually worth tapping into these resources. So, for example, we have some really um, shameful clay deposits. Let's put that on here. So look at these. Clay pit just to give you an impression about that and this is also mining so to say here we would sport 16 workers really small figure and the output ranges between 28 and 14 percent this is really low and we'd have the same thing over here but as you see here none of these patches has a beneficial color at the end of the day you will put in tons of workers for a very 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 low yield and really I'm not over exaggerating we're going to let these guys run a year with 10 employees and then I'm going to show you the shameful number of stones they've managed to dig out of their mountain there in the time it's really a hard chore but the plus side about it as far as I've seen things in this game this is an endless source of your of your resources so definitely a plus side you know all right so we need more food that's another thing we're right now sporting a bakery workload and of a, a, a full capacity so let's just refurnish this place we're going to put up another oven there and we got to remember correctly Ugh. okay so first off pause expand room here we go that's what I wanted so we're going to remove these pillars via the expand room command it took me a moment to find it again and we're going to set up another oven for let's say well Let's put in a real flagship here for another 10 employees. There we go. We can't fit that on the wall here. And now we need to amp up the auxiliaries again. So we're going to put them down there for the sake of uh, room efficiency. And we need a little bit more than that for the sake of efficiency. So let's put that up here. Okay, we are at 100% efficiency again. So let's put in the, the pillars yet again. So let's put them down here this time. So wait a sec. Yeah, this thing can be finicky at times, especially when you want to remove stuff. but the stability of this place is really important for me. I dislike it when rooms have a low stability because this will increase not only the costs of building this place, but also the costs of maintaining the place, and that's where it just gets annoying. But the problem here is that I can't stabilize this place without removing the oven, so we're, uh, we're screwed either way. Okay, so let's just uh, ditch that idea and just accept that we have to work with a smaller uh, piece of gear. Sometimes these optimizations take some time, but what's real fun about it is they make your rooms more individualized, and I'm pretty sure you guys can already see some optimization on 
your own, what you can't do there. So in this scenario, we just put in two more ovens. There's lots of ways which how you could have resolved that issue here as well. But just wanted to show you that the building menu can be sometimes quite a pain. But it just gets better the more often you do it. That's the that that's one thing I can say for sure. Okay, so let's pick up nine more uh, odd jobbers. So we have some workers at hand. We have a lot of grain right now. We have a heavy surplus of it, even so. So therefore, I really want to employ more bakers because our people love bread. Our food stock stockpiles are heavily declining, as you can see here by the bars. So we have to work on that. It's one issue when you are upgrading your your uh, citizenship numbers. You really have to pay attention to your total workforce and uh, um, no, not your your total um, food production capacity. That's a really, really important figure because it's easy to forget about the fact that if you upgrade your population, you'll also upgrade the hunger of these people. Just keep that in mind always. Keep an eye on the needs of your people while you're expanding. So, let's see. Somebody pointed out that I didn't have storage stockpots for certain goods. And yes, that's right. My, my goodness. So, thanks... To the audience, I keep uh, I keep informed about uh, slip-ups here. So drinks and uh, drinks and clothes have no crates. So sometimes you will just uh, miss these things on your uh, while you're playing the game on your own. It's uh, unavoidable, but the good thing is that sooner or later you will notice that here over here at this uh, bar. Things just won't add up anymore. And that's a good way to notice whether or not your stuff is working out or not. So, we're going to set up some farming now because I really feel like we need it. So, let's harvest wild eatables here and let's pick up only fruit. We're going to pick up the fruit as a starter for a farm. I'm not going to pick up vegetables here. Two reasons. First off, the human populace doesn't like it too much and the second reason is fruit is not only some or well no the other way around humans don't have any particular preference above fruit or veg but there's one thing worth mentioning when you're raising human kids you need fruit to feed the kids and therefore fruits better for humans than veg because veg is just been eaten by those dudes they really don't mutter about eating uh, that they don't dislike that per se but they don't gain anything in particular whereas if we go for fruit we gain an extra of a resource which we'll use for raising children that's uh, one thing that i wanted to point out so let's set up a fruit farm here and we're going to take measure on this side there. And let's just make it as huge as possible. Oops. I slipped. I would copy the other farm, but then I would just copy the wrong... <laughs> the wrong type of farm. 55 on 16. So we need 88 fruit and we can host 14 farmers on that. Here we even have the capacity to upgrade our grain production another time and I dig that. So farming is in one regard always a bit problematic because it gives you a delayed income. So by the time that our farms will deliver we don't get any other food income there but so far well worst case scenario we're going to set up another hunter we have still enough game on the map i just wanted to uh, revisit my statements about the hunters in the last episode where i mentioned that they were such a good deal there's one thing i really need to stress about stress out about hunters though they their their resource is finite 
at the end of the day, there will be no more there will be no more game on the map if you plaster the entire map with hunters. Therefore, be careful with that by thinking that hunters would provide you a endless source of uh, food. That's not the case. In some reg regards, you also need to stop plastering down hunters at some point, otherwise the, the game won't uh, replenish good enough anymore. I haven't put up pastures in this run yet, I know. I haven't uh, touched livestock yet, even though you can't even build it at the very first start of a run. I'm so sorry that I missed that. We're going to cover that later too. I'm a little bit sad that I didn't uh, catch that one. Some smart person dropped a comment about that. And I was like mind blown about this wisdom. But you know, there's just so many ways of playing this game. That's one thing I can't stress out enough. This uh, is a very, very sandboxy game to say the very least. So we are now monitoring our farm, uh, farm or mine. So we're producing so far 130 stones in the first year. You know, this episode is still ab about mining after all, promise. <laughs> I just wanted to fix up a couple of other problems. Like I keep mentioning, this game is very, very um, complex and therefore it's hard just stay in one topic the entirety of the episode. But as you can see here already by the figures, we are investing 10 workers and our output is not that insanely high. So the previous year we had a output of 157. That number is of course not really fully uh, representative because we don't know at which part of the year this mine started business. So we're going to check out the next number and then we see how much we produce for real by the way the farm here has gone into a uh, season so i pick up workers left and right and now i have picked up all the immigrants that were available but it's okay you know we have now a big fruit farm running and i also managed to put up the work for workload on this grain farm onto the max as well so we're setting up the basics for farming and uh, I haven't forgotten about irrigation as has been pointed out in the past. I just want to dedicate another episode fully to the to topic of farming. Right now I'm just setting up my fields in a way that we can optimize them later. Just if you were asking yourself why the hell I'm not irrigating my fields. Usually I would have already done that in between, but you know, that's the issue with tutorials. I need to talk so much about certain topics that I keep missing out on things that could have been done already a while before. So, if you want to increase the efficiency of your miners, there's a couple of things that you can do. First off, and that's one thing you might already have guessed, technology. There is, of course, technology to improve everything in this game, and with mining, it's all the same. If I just happen to find it, that is... They reorganized the tech tree between the last uh, versions, and now I'm a little bit lost. Here we go. So, mining. 500 science points, so this is not a cheap tech at all. And as you can see here, after that we'd unlock gem mining and after that we'd even increase our yields further but mining yield increases are yet again a costly thing as you see here but i'm really tempted to invest those 500 points for the sake of speeding up things here's another thing that i haven't touched yet at all in this game there is also the tool usage of an industry I haven't touched this topic because, you know, complexity, and I didn't want to steamroll you guys. Every, every workshop has a tool level that you can adjust. It's just the same like you can adjust how many pieces of clothing a per person in your city should have. You can also tell them how many tools they should use. Tool usage increases the efficiency of your, of your business by a lot. And as you can see here, if you mouse over the production numbers there, there's also all the things that are influencing your mining output. Technology, nobility, we're going to cover nobility soon as well. 
because we can't we are eligible to already vote for one noble but not this episode and the last figure equipped tools that's the most that's the one that i wanted to point out so if you are increasing the amount of tools in your city you also increase the amount of uh, efficiency in your city but i really really strongly recommend you to do one thing while we're talking about tools but I'm going to introduce that by the time when it is time. It's so well hidden that I always have trouble finding it myself. I think it was here. Yeah, so here's the uh, general tool usage. You click onto the hammer thingy and uh, the first thing I really... I really really um, recommend you to do is turn off the tools everywhere and just turn it on where you want them otherwise whenever there will be any tools pouring into your city your people will be like me 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 and the overall effect of that well will evaporate of course we can't craft any tools yet i just wanted to point that out that this is from my own understanding one of the biggest power-ups that you can go for so right now we're going to reserve all the tools for our miners but that is going to be covered in a future episode when we're actually start smithing but for now well with that with a economy that weak i can't really start thinking about smithing any tools because we would need a steady surplus of metal and right now, I just don't see that happening. I just don't. So, what about the potters? There's only one potter working, so... Let's put up some extra potters, because we have a nice supply of clay lying around here. But, if we check out our mason's workshop, our mason's workshop is consuming a total amount of 194 stones per year. So, with some luck, this place is already shedding off enough stone to keep our dudes here fed. So we have a permanent surplus of stone that we are able to sell off. And another pleasant thing is happening as we, as I'm speaking here. We are creating a surplus of bread. So our 14 bakers are finally consuming all the grain that we're producing. And there is no problem whatsoever in getting things done. But... As things are with this game, I'm also noticing that our coal supplies are slowly depleting. So it is yet again to employ more charcoalers. And that's one thing about this game. As one thing grows, something else will deplenish. And you will always have to keep a sharp eye out on these things while they change to keep everything balanced. And this is what the game makes so freaking satisfying to play. Because you always will run into something to do. There's never going to be the point in this game where you feel bored out because you just uh, you just found the, the perfect ratio and now everything is running. No, you just don't. I mean, there are a couple of tricks that I haven't learned myself. I consider myself a rookie with attitude in this game. Enough to show you guys the ropes and to show you guys how to play the game and enjoy it for yourselves. But honestly, there is. This is one of the deepest games that I've played so far, and um, I'm digging it. And I really, really can't or can't really uh, cross out that there is going to be another tutorial series in the far fetched future when there is going to be, I don't know, either a couple of versions in the future of full release where I'll ha add in a ton of more things. That I have learned until then. So for now, we're going to add up more charcoaling capacity because we really need, we are really, really needing that. Our coal production was uh, depleting and that was a very, very bad thing. So let's employ double the amount and let's see. Coal is one good. If it ever spills over, be happy about it. You either then can start exporting it or just wait until you upgrade any other of your industries which will then happily eat up your overproduction so to say you either export your coal overproduction or you just uh, 
increase your buffers because that stuff is going to be needed. Selling coal is a little bit ungrateful business because it's just the same worth as unprocessed wood. Or, well, maybe it's not after I have upgraded the, the trades. So coal, four, and wood, three. So yeah, with enough trade upgrades, coal is a tad bit more valuable. Huzzah, I guess. Well, our city, I think it's very, very important to focus my technological improvements at the time being now into war bartering. Because we are so relying on trade that I think our next uh, 500 research points are going to go into foreign relations to upgrade our sales prices even more so we have some really ridiculous numbers while we're selling stuff so we can finally get our economy rolling for good. Now, with these upgrades you really need to pick them up as you see them fit. There's, uh, for every city, a different approach, I assume. For every strategy, a different approach. For every species, a different approach. And for, for, first and foremost, for every player. So go crazy and uh, discover it for yourself, whatever is uh, ticking the boxes for you. So before I end today's episode, we're going to fast forward time and see the annual output of our mine for real, but I'm really afraid that 157 was pretty close to the actual maximum that 10 workers can churn out under pretty, pretty ideal conditions. Don't forget that this is a mine with 100% uh, density deposits there. This is as good as it gets. I mean, sure, there, are, there, there could be better deposits, but not much more. And 10 workers in the quarry right now are necessary to fulfill the hunger of my stonemason's workshop. Almost. 192 versus a consumption of 199. So we actually will need a couple of extra quarrymen here, but it'll all add up in the, in the time being. Okay, my friends. So... That's been a very, very fun episode, and uh, all the things that I mentioned here about the stone mine apply to all the other mining in the game. There's really no difference in terms of how the game handles these things, and therefore, go crazy, have fun with it, and we're going to enjoy that. Next episode, we're going, fine, we're going to be finally diving into the topic of nobility. That's something that I really, really wanted to go for. And alongside, I think it's either time to start smithing, or what I personally think would, uh, is more likely, we're going to start optimizing our farming business a tad bit. And this will also include some talk about water. Okay, so with that out of the way, I'll only leave that I'm happy to hear your comments. Leave me your thumbs up if you enjoyed. This helps a lot if you might wonder why I'm asking for your thumbs up all the time. The algorithm is very, very pleased about your likes. So if you want to help out, it really helps a lot. And last but not least, check out the channel. Hundreds of videos. I'd be delighted if you did. Have a good one, and hopefully we're going to see each other at the next episode again. So, have a good one.